See, kids? It's called a pro tip. <laughs> I'm ready when you are, sir. All right, so we're working on replacing the timing chain set here. This uh, is what connects the crank gear, cam sprocket right, or sprocket right here, up to the cam sprocket, which is the bigger one on the top of my hand. This makes sure that the cam and the crank stay timed together and your engine runs efficiently. So you can see on there, there's dots that you need to line up. And when those dots line up, that means the number one cylinder is top dead center. So when you take the old one off, you want to line those two dots up so your engine is top dead center, and then you can pull off the old set. So uh, for putting it back on, you just have them lined up. Um, obviously they have teeth, so if you move it, it's still going to come back to center once you line it up. So on the, on the crank, there's going to be a notch that your crank sprocket goes on, and then on the cam, there's going to be a little button underneath the cam or there's going to be a little peg that goes through this hole that comes depending on your camshaft. You just simply slide them on. The, uh, the crank sprocket usually goes on pretty easily. Uh, this cam, since it's new, uh, is going to be a little bit tighter to tolerances, so you might need to tap it on with a hammer the last little bit. Now how can you check the chain slack to see if your timing set needs to be replaced? Or okay, so if you're already in this far, which odds are you aren't going to be, unless you know you're replacing it already, you can obviously do the side if there's more than, I believe it's a uh, half inch of movement, then it needs to be replaced. But what you're supposed to do so you don't have to take it all apart is you check, you open up your rotor here, distributor, you see the rotor. What you're going to do with all this assembled, you're going to simply put a socket on your crank bolt and you're going to spin the engine until it, you don't have to go very far, but it's, it, you, can use, you can use the uh, degree on the, uh, the damper if you want to measure using that, uh, the degree method. You can turn the engine until it's you know, reading top dead center where the, in the indicator on the timing cover is pointed at the zero degree mark on the damper. And then you turn the crank back the other way, and as soon as you see movement out of the rotor, you stop. And then you measure the degree difference that is on the, uh, the damper. So you turn it one way and then turn it back. Turn it one way to get all the tension going and then you basically turn it back to see how much slack is going to be in the chain. Uh, for this particular application, and it seems to be most, uh, 8 degrees is replacement. So if you have 8 degrees of slack in it, then it's time to replace it. Uh, I think this one had 6 to 8. It was somewhere in there, so it was pretty much time to replace it and since we're already in here anyways uh, it just makes sense to go ahead and do it. So slack in the chain and Slack in the chain will basically the crank will start moving before the cam starts moving which throws the cam out of time and it'll automatically make the cam you know, however many degrees it'll be the cam will be that much retarded so which is why this one you know it, it'll give you like low idle or you know it just won't run the way you think it's supposed to so a lot of people will put a new uh, timing set in and be like, oh, it really woke the truck up. Well, it's just because now the timing is back to where it's supposed to be. So so even though your timing could be set correctly, it may not be performing right exactly. because the timing exactly. uh, set the itself cam, is... The cam will be four degrees retarded or six or whatever it is. So the cam bolt just goes right through this rocket there, Loctite. For this particular application, application uh, for 460s, it's... Uh, uh, 45 foot pounds you torque it down to. So we'll just snug it up. And then I got the torque range. And for torquing these specs, it's easiest if you leave all the spark plugs in because then you get the compression of the motor and you should be able to get 45 foot pounds out of the torque wrench before the engine starts spinning. Yep. You got your timing cover. You're going to have your gaskets that are going to go against the block. There's going to be a new seal. So the bottom of the timing cover against the oil pan, go on there like so. It will include the new seal for the crankshaft. And then you've also got, this one goes on the timing cover, to the timing cover and the block, like such. And then this one, in your water pump plate goes against that and this one will go on the back of the water pump plate. So there's layers to it and as you put it together it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory with the holes that are on each one. 
and it comes with the little pieces of cork gasket for the oil pan, the front of the pan. This particular one has a metal lined uh, oil pan gasket, so this one didn't rip, but a lot of the times when you pull that timing cover, it'll rip the corners of these off. So what you want to do uh, is just cut these with like a utility knife or some sort of slim knife, and you can just pull those out before it tears anything back in the block in the oil pan. With this gasket on the bottom, it's got a little channel that it fits right in. So you want to make sure you got your end flush there, because once you go to start stretching it in, it's going to create excess on the other side if you don't have it right where it needs to be. And it's easier to put this on before you put it in the truck because you have to clear the crankcase at the bottom and it can be quite difficult to get this to line up and get in the gap. So I recommend taking it out. And as you can see my gasket's going all over the place. Grab some bolts for the timing case because you can't do the top bolts because those also tie into the water uh, water pump. So for the timing cover, you can only do these bottom three or four bolts that do just through the timing cover. Huh. Uh, so it'll help retain this to the back of the timing cover when you go to put it in place. So you just want to line it up, make sure all your holes line up. And it's going on in indeed the right direction. And then. Now, why do you use uh, why do you use that as opposed to RTV on the timing cover? Uh, you can you could use RTV. This is just it's personal preference. Um, RTV you could use as the gasket alone. Like you don't even need gaskets if you really wanted to just run it without. Um, I just found that this worked the last time I uh, had the water pump off and I was retaining those gaskets. So just kind of what I go with now. Well, a lot of guys think that more is better when it comes to sealing, True. and that's not necessarily the case. The gaskets are, the gasket is your seal, so you really shouldn't need anything, but the way you're doing it with a little, a little, uh, form a gasket to tack it in place, to hold it. It's, yeah, it's, it's not for sealing anything, it's other, it's simply just to make it easier on me. Right. Yeah, that's a big old wrench, huh? Yeah. So what more here we got? We got to just clean surfaces? Yeah, so basically, yeah, just clean off the surfaces of the block. You want it nice and flat, clean, oil-free. Uh, acetone in a rag is good. Any sort of uh, grease remover is also acceptable. You just want to make sure the mating surfaces are flat because you got a leftover gasket on there. It can create gaps in your new gasket, and then you have a water leak, and then you're spending another two hours taking it all apart because as you see all the accessories are tied into the water pump on yep. Ford 460. And you just want to slip this down around your crank get that seal over the crank there move your smog pump out of the way and you just want to go in a little bit high and just drop it straight down so that oil pan that front seal against the oil pan doesn't get kinked or bound up because that will cause a leak guaranteed. You can get a couple of these bolts started and you can get the rest of the bolts that go into just the timing cover. And then also keep in mind that one of these bolts goes through your the marker for your when you're setting your timing on your damper so make sure that that bracket is over the hole so you get that put back and the smog pump is always in the way. You're getting good at pulling that accessory drive thing off of there. <laughs> Big old cast loom. Yeah. Monstrosity. Four bolts that you take, or five bolts you take out of the oil pan that go up into the timing cover, so it'll pull down on that, that front seal. And this being a Ford, they're probably metric, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a 10 millimeter. <laughs> balancer here and this is going to slide right over your right over your crank and there's a little notch on it as we showed before it can only go on one way and it slides in and make sure it gets a good seat with that seal and doesn't kink anything and now you're ready uh, to put the water pump on yes yeah, so the gaskets are different because Water flows 
This is on the water pump side, so water flows all through this area, so these areas don't need to be sealed off. But on the back side, that goes against the timing cover, water only flows through this rectangular port. So you need a gasket to completely encompass that hole so you don't get water leaking into the timing plate cover and then down okay. everywhere, essentially. Uh, several of these bolts that you need to put some sort of sealant on because they are... They are. They go into the water jackets. Okay. Yeah, one way you can tell is shoot uh, compressed air. If, if in the course of cleaning, you can shoot compressed air into each bolt hole uh, around the water pump, and you'll know which ones blow out through the jacket. See, kids, it's called a pro tip. <laughs> The half moon key goes on the bottom of the crank and that's what sets your uh, little dowel pin so your crank doesn't, or for your damper here, doesn't spin on the crank. And then once you go to put your damper on, if it's giving you any trouble fighting it, you may want to make sure, come back and revisit this and make sure that it's in the right. And that's better than using a hammer to tap it on or something? Yeah, because it, it's got to go on exactly square. Uh, with that being said, where there's a will, there's a way. So you have more access to these. You can try to not hit every bracket inside your truck so you don't end up with flooding up. And now you have a per perfectly installed uh, damper. See, you can go ahead and install your crank bolt because this is gonna this clears so you can do your pulley afterwards. Uh, don't use this to tighten up your your balancer like we just did with the tool. Uh, you gotta you can really do some damage to the threads in there, and if it's beyond repair, then you're pulling the crank out. Uh, and you... Yeah, that's a good point about banging up the threads inside your crank. That's pretty much the last thing you want. Yeah, because then you at minimum. A machine shop has got to come in and do something. <laughs> I shouldn't have had like eight beers before I did this. <laughs> Get fucking, it'll, it'll get fucking one mile to a gallon. <laughs> That's what it'll get. <laughs> hey man, I'm covering these facts right now. Yeah. Hey, you think it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so replacing the camshaft is a big job and you should also replace the timing set while you're in there, which I did not do. So that's what I was going back and doing today is fixing mistakes that I made. So long story short, trucks back together, it runs great. Now it idles perfectly, computer controlling, computer not controlling. Uh, your, my base timing is set at 12 degrees, uh, port top dead center, and it idles per right around 800, degree, 800 uh, RPM. Uh, really good. I haven't, I haven't really driven it since I've had the timing set on. Well, I've been also dealing with uh, fixing the air conditioning because uh, we unhooked the AC condenser and we did the cam swap. So. Uh, basically it's been sitting in the driveway, but it idles perfectly. I'm excited to get it on the road. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in for this. Uh, me kind of being in front of the camera more than Jim and learning from my mistakes. Hopefully everyone gets something out of this where they can only have to do the job one time because doing it twice or three times sucks. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like. Thanks guys. <laughs> This is miserable. <laughs> Not good at this. I know.